Why Calvin Coolidge may have been the most libertarian president in a modest Vermont graveyard lies the understated gravestone of Calvin Coolidge, marked only by a faint presidential seal, reflecting the humility of the 30th president known as Silent Cal for his rare public speeches and restrained policymaking approach. Critics saw his silence as a weakness, yet it was his moderation that defined his strength. Born in 1872 in the challenging terrain of Plymouth Notch, Coolidge's early life was marked by the harsh realities of farming life and the innovative spirit of his family, which started a cooperative cheese factory to overcome the limitations of their environment. Coolidge's political values were shaped in his youth, observing town meetings and the principled leadership of his father and grandfather. These experiences instilled in him the values of common sense, civility, and a deep respect for Republican equality. Despite personal challenges, including the loss of his mother and struggles with homesickness and acceptance at Amherst College, Coolidge persevered, finding his voice in debating which later paved his way into law and eventually politics, despite his initial financial constraints. Coolidge's steady rise in politics, from local committees to the governor of Massachusetts, was in stark contrast to the progressive era's push for rapid reforms. His preference for cautious governance emphasized the importance of administrative efficiency and local autonomy over federal intervention. His civil demeanor and approach to politics, focusing on hard work and service over negative campaigning, endeared him to voters, including newly naturalized citizens. Coolidge's representation of immigrants in court, often without charge, won him broad support. The defining moment of Coolidge's political career came during the Boston police strike of 1919. His decisive action against the striking police officers, prioritizing public safety, catapulted him into the national spotlight and eventually to the vice presidency under Warren Harding. Coolidge faced the challenge of reducing national debt without raising taxes, a task complicated by the Teapot Dome scandal. His fiscal policies focused on reducing government spending and lowering tax rates, strategies that spurred economic growth and reduced national debt. Under Coolidge's leadership, the U.S. economy saw significant growth, marked by increased productivity and innovation. However, his tenure also saw the enactment of the Restrictive Immigration Act of 1924, reflecting the era's contentious debates over immigration. The personal tragedy of losing his son, Calvin Jr., in 1924 did not deter Coolidge from his presidential duties, winning a subsequent election by a landslide. His decision not to seek re-election in 1928 was driven by his belief in the importance of rotating leadership to prevent an imperial presidency. Coolidge's legacy is often debated, particularly in relation to the Great Depression. While not directly responsible for the economic downturn, his policies of fiscal restraint and moderation offer lessons for contemporary governance. Calvin Coolidge's presidency, characterized by his quiet demeanor, fiscal conservatism, and commitment to public service, provides a nuanced perspective on leadership and the balance of power in American politics, illustrating the impact of personal integrity and restraint in the highest office.